um, we were supposed to have this meeting last week. But unfortunately, because of the network challenges, we had to postpone it. So he texted me yesterday. And I was like, cool. Actually, I was supposed to be at Reyes' house today. Uh, it was my assistant keyboard is just not around, but I had to just come here, you know, and make the sacrifice. I didn't want to disappoint and postpone it again. So I just I just had to make it this evening. So, um, that's a privilege and it's a blessing to be here this evening. If you are ready and um, you can hear me loud and clear, I want you to type one, one, one in the channel in the community that you find yourself in the telegram group that you joined i right, type one 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 in one 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 okay i'll be starting the recording okay the recording is already in session all right so okay awesome awesome so uh let's have a word of prayer then we we'll get right into it business father i thank you for today bless your name i give you other praise and adoration of you know i pray and ask for your wisdom that builds men and you understand that establishes i pray that they'll be empowered they'll be equipped and they'll be enlightened and that they'll go out there and walk in the fulfillment of their truest potential and purpose. This we call it done. In Jesus' name, Amen. So, uh, um, once again, a, a good time and a privilege to be here this evening to share on this topic. Um, tonight, I'm speaking on mental elevation for upward transformation. Okay, mental elevation for upward transformation. And you know, it's, it's it's a very let me see interesting topic. Okay, as a nice transformation speaker, these are the conversations that I always want to have because I believe that man is mind, and a shift in your mind is a shift in your life. A shift in your mind is a shift in your life okay one of one of the powerful um let, let me say word that um i've read in the bible okay was a scripture that says that your mind can even limit god okay let me read that scripture to you we're going to build on that and we're going to understand something about living about the art of living about the art of living hmm. so we've often heard that as the man think it in his heart um so he is all right share the scripture type yeah type yeah in the chat section in the um telegram chat section or the channel all right let's go to the book of psalms chapter 78 verse 41 a scripture that i believe many of us haven't paid much attention to it so this scripture was talking about the people of israel okay how they allowed their mind to limit god to limit god to limit the most high okay so your mind can limit god your mind can stop God from working in your life. And that is a very serious thing. That's a very serious thing. Why am I saying this? Okay. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because I want us to understand something that hmm, in life, you become who you think you are hear this in life you become who you think you are you become who you think you are so we are talking about you know god-given destiny god-given purpose and all that 
But one of the easiest ways you can walk out of this destiny, you can walk out of this purpose, is not or is to think outside the realm of the creator. Is to think outside the realm of the manufacturer. Let me give you a simple scenario that I always use. Imagine you go and buy um, a mobile device, say an iPhone, all right, and um, you don't understand how the Apple device work or the iPhone works. You don't have any manual that can guide you on how you can effectively use that device. You are just going to mismanage it. One, you are going, you are just, you are going to use it either below. Oftentimes, you're going to use it below its potential because you don't know what that phone or that device can help you achieve. And that is the challenge that we are facing right here in this plane of assistance, that we are always trying our best to, you know, catch up with life, trying our best to work in the fulfillment of our purpose, trying our best to transform our minds. But what we miss is, what we miss, or the, the gap that we are trying to miss is the gap where we don't think like who we are supposed to think. Someone may ask, what do I mean by who you are supposed to think? You know, there's, there's a thinking pattern that you should have if you want to have a transformed life. There's a thinking pattern that you should have if you want to have a transformed life. We are being told in scriptures that we should be transformed or we should be renewed or transformed by the renewal of our mind, okay? By the renewal of our mind so that we may know the good, perfect, and acceptable will of God for our life. One time I was sharing with a brother that, you know, when we talk about purpose, 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 purpose is not anything, you know, um, complicated. Purpose is all about having a renewed mind. For you to work in the fulfillment of your purpose, for you to discover purpose, you first need to have a transformed mind. No matter the uh, the impartation you receive, no matter the anointing oil that will be poured on you, no matter the word that you receive, if you don't have a transformed mind, you can never work in the fulfillment of your purpose. You can never work in the fulfillment of who you are supposed to become. So there are many people that are wasting their time in life. They are wasting their years and death, not because they don't have the resources, not because they don't have divine helpers, not because God is not working in their life. It's simply because they are not willing to transform their minds. And transformation of your mind is not a, you know, a spiritual gift. It takes intentionality. We don't see mind renewal we don't see mental transformation as part of the spiritual gift in the bible when you go to first corinthians chapter 12 and you you read about the spiritual gift you don't see mental transformation there he said he gave he gave you know the gift of knowledge the gift of prophecy and all that the gift of understanding we can't see gift of mental transformation so so it is about intentionality you need to be intentional about mental development You need to have a certain pattern in your life, a way that you think. You don't think like the normal human being. Why? Because you are not the normal human being. I remember, I think it, it should be Richmond. You know, one time I think I said something and Richmond came. I, I don't remember, but Richmond came to ask me a question. It's, it's been a long time. Richmond, I don't know you whether you remember, but I think. You came, you came to me to ask me something, you know, a statement that I made some time ago, actually, actually, more than a year. All right. I remember that was, I think that's, that's, that's how we came in touch. I think from IG or something. I don't remember. I don't remember, but I remember, but I just remember I said something that, you know, I stopped talking about some of these things because people thought it was heresy. When we talk about heresy, you know, um, heresy is simply um, you saying things that oftentimes are beyond the normal human understanding. Okay. All right okay um or, or, or proper proper um, contrary okay to to the orthodox way of thinking all right yes so when right. even you go to scriptures in the book of luke we get to get to a particular scene where jesus had to open the minds of his disciples where jesus was opening the minds of his disciples he said jesus opened the minds of his disciples Jesus opened the minds of his disciples. Ah, but I thought, I thought, you know, just by working with Jesus, it means you, you, you know, you, you already transform, you're already working in purpose, you know, you, you, you're already perfect and all that. But Jesus had to open the minds of his disciples. Ah. 
if only you can understand this. And 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 an interesting part was that he didn't just open their minds just for opening sake. He just he said he says that he opened their minds for them to understand the scriptures. Now let me take you let me take you so let me take you on a journey. All right, let's go on a journey. It's a very simple journey. All right, cast your mind back growing up. Okay, there are there are some. Ha ha ha. Yeah, Richmond says here you you know he was questioning my beliefs and thinking parts. You know, right? Okay, so. Let me let me just take you on a journey. Let's go on a journey, right? Let's go on a trip. I believe you're in, you're 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 enjoying this session. Um, cast your mind back growing up. Okay, um, there were some statements that um, people made to you. You know um, that even so now sometimes you, you you ponder over it and and the moment you start thinking about it, it, it seems like you know um, you 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 can't do some things. Okay, that statement that people made to you became sort of a limitation. I remember my mentor sharing with me one time that when he was growing up and um, he was starting this, this journey into the personal development stage, um, uh, one, one person told him, right, that, you know, he doesn't really have a good voice and why should he engage? He should, he should just stay somewhere, you know, do something, one corner and all that, all right? Why should he engage in public speaking stuff and, you know, all about these things? And that became, that became like, a tent over his life so so his his dreams became shattered you know at that point in his life he, he thought everything has just come to an end so one day he recorded a video posted on his status and a lady dm him he was like wow you have a good voice why don't you start doing this he said that was a turning point of his journey what am i saying what i'm trying to say is that your 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 um belief systems your, your thinking patterns are often influenced by your environment. Environment is powerful than hereditary. Environment is powerful than hereditary. It doesn't matter where you come from, it doesn't matter your background, but the environment that you associate yourself in, whether physical environment, whether spiritual environment, you know, has a great impact on your journey. It has a great impact on your transformation. It has a great impact on your transformation. So it's not surprising that you find your mate, you know, who who might be so dumb here. The moment he leaves the, the shores of this country, he leaves the shores of this continent, he moves to a different environment, and it begins like this. It's magic. It's not magic. It's because of environment. And I always say that the environment does not necessarily mean you have to change fiscal location. You can be in the same location with people and still create your own internal environment. How do you create your own internal environment? By creating your own belief systems. What do you believe in? What do you say about yourself? When you wake up, what do you see about yourself? What do you say about yourself? What do you think about yourself? Trust me, over time, you may not trace you know, um, your results to these beliefs, but I can show you that these beliefs have a way of influencing the result that you have in life. People don't just pop up into the scene. No, it doesn't happen like that. They have been speaking into existence. The Bible says that we should call for those things. We should call for those things that they are not, as if they are. What are you trying to do? You are trying to create your own environment. You are trying to create your own future where you usher yourself into. Where you usher yourself into. You get to a point in your life where you realize that it is 100% your responsibility to achieve or to work um, on your life or to work on your purpose. You don't owe anyone any explanation. Who you become in life is totally your responsibility. No one is coming to save you. Not at all. No one is coming to save you. No one is coming to save you. It's very important that you understand this thing about life, that life is 100% your responsibility. And divinity will only come to your aid until you've exhausted all that has been placed within your abilities. Within your abilities. So many of us are praying, you know, we are hoping that one day God will come and um, change our story. No, you are the author of your life. James Allen will tell you that man is mine and evermore he has the power 
to change his destiny by altering his thoughts. By altering his thoughts. Thoughts are spiritual frequencies. So when you want to elevate your life, you first have to elevate yourself in your mind. You need to see it in your mind if you want to see it in life. I remember way back in level 200, something interesting happened in my my room, okay, my hall, um, my room, okay. So I remember I wanted something so urgently, I wanted something so urgently, okay, and I didn't know how to get it. Physically, I knew I had I had no means to assess that thing, but I, I needed that thing so, so urgently, I needed it so badly, like I wanted it. So what I, I remembered that, ah, if I don't have it physically, that should not stop me from having it, all right? I should go back to the drawing board. I should go back to where all things are, are being created. All things are being created. Where are all things being created? All things are being created in your mind. All things are being created in your mind. So I went back in my mind. I created a scene and decided to you know, replay the scene. Every night before I sleep, I'll replay the scene, see myself already having it. See myself already having it. See myself already having access to that thing that I wanted did that continuously for some period of time, okay? And funny enough, one day I was just working on campus, okay? Just working on campus, you know, doing my normal activities, going to lectures. So I, was, I think I was returning back from lectures, getting back to my hall. When I entered my, my, my room, okay, I rented my room and my roommate was like, a guy came to look for you, I was like, okay. Um, and the guy was like, my roommate was like, oh, the guy says, when you come back, you know, uh, just call him. So I think the guy left his number. No, no, he was, was my former classmate way back in junior um, and primary. Okay. So this guy was, was also on campus, just that um, he's, he's currently even outside the country. So not knowing what I wanted, that guy already had it. Like that guy already, you know, had access to what I was struggling to get access to. So, so what I, you know, when, when, when I, I called him and um, through a conversation, like I think we were just discussing something. I mentioned that then I was like, I thought the video would be on you. Just meet me at Pence and let me just um, give it to you. And I didn't even, I didn't even remember that I had, I had created a mental scene, and that mental scene, you know, had called for that thing that I wanted so badly. So what am I trying to say? What am I trying to say, or what I'm trying to say to you is that whenever you find difficulty in elevating physically, go back to where all things have been fashioned. Go back to where all things have been manufactured. That is the womb of your mind. Incubate that vision. Incubate that scene. It's just a process of time. It is just a process of time. The same way when someone is pregnant, you know, within the first few weeks to months, you may not even see that the person is pregnant. But just after a period of time, the lady or the woman does not have to convince you that she is carrying something. That is how the process of manifestation happens. It's just a process of time. If only you can hold on to that vision. If only you can hold on to that picture. And back it with your beliefs. It's just a process of time and you are going to have it in your physical world. The challenge we are trying to face is that we are trying to create things within our physical world when we've not created a prototype in our mind. We are trying to create things in our physical world when we don't have prototypes in our mind. So that is that is that is a challenge that we're trying to face. It's, and, and it's something that I think we need to deal with it now. So we are trying to create things in our physical world when in our mind you don't even have a prototype. So you want to afford this um, product, you want to you know, achieve this goal. Yes, it's good to write down your goals, very necessary. But after writing down your goals, do you have a picture of it in your mind? Do you have a picture of it in your mind? I remember when I started my journey um, as a coach, Oftentimes, during my coaching sessions, I'll ask, you know, my clients a very simple question. And the simple question was, where do you see yourself in the next five years? Where do you see yourself in the next five years? And as funny as 
some of the answers were i remember one time someone was like even where i see myself tomorrow i don't even know they were talking about five years <laughs> you know so so that that is the irony of life that many of us are trying to do life but hey we don't have a manual we don't have a plan we don't have any strategy we don't have a system we don't have a structure we don't have premium clarity about life they are trying many things up and down trying to you know try to look like we are busy but we are busy doing nothing we are busy doing nothing we are busy doing nothing they, they just want to show like yes they are also trying their best you know their friends are winning so they have to also show up and like that. See, they're also winning. But trust me, when you go deep down, you realize that nothing, nothing is working. It's like a cycle. It's like you put in a CD in, in a DVD player. You know, it's just running in circles. So they face this experience, and another two years comes, nothing is working. They come back to square one. That is how many people are running their lives now. It's 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 just you know a a, a, a system. And until you tackle the system, until you find a solution, that is how life is going to play. That is how life is going to play for you. It doesn't get better with time. It gets better with the accurate knowledge. It gets better with the accurate knowledge. It doesn't get better with time. It gets better with the accurate knowledge. Listen, we've been told that, oh, we go better, you know, um, let's, let's see what God, for us, God has for us and all that. Trust me, until you embrace accurate knowledge for your life, you're just going to face sequence of challenges from one point to the other. You're just going to face different sets of challenges from one point to the other. It's very painful, but that's the truth. And the truth is better. Many of us just want, you know, um, to be sugarcoated with, you know, ideas, be sugarcoated with lies, and all that. Because even God's own people perish without accurate knowledge. Even the people of God, they perish without, because they don't have accurate knowledge. And you want to tell me you want to do this life without having accurate knowledge, without having premium clarity, without having understanding of your why, without having an understanding of why you are here, without having a mental development, without transforming your mind on a daily basis. And mental development is not a one day thing. You have to constantly prune your mind. Your mind is like a garden. This is how I always view my mind. My mind is like a garden, and I believe that whatever I saw in my mind is going to read because the mind is the most fertile soil ever. Whatever you plant in your mind, trust me, which a minute until you pluck it out. So you've been told that in this family, no one has ever been to the university and you accepted it as a belief system, you accepted it as true. You'd be surprised, you try your best applying, you can get 80s, you can try your best applying for the university, you realize that you get the university and even there's no one there to help you. So you'll be frustrated, you have to quit it. You thought it's, it's just because it's, it's, it's a financial, no, it's because of the belief system that they've created in the family. You, you were told that in this family, Obia and Wari, was sister and Wari, Oh, brother, one worry until it drew so you want to marry. Nothing is working. You are very beautiful. You're even more beautiful than your siblings. But you are, you're not understanding why no one is approaching you. You're not understanding why your friends who are not even as beautiful as you are are getting married, but you are not. It's not because of anything. It's always because of the belief system that you've accepted as truth. Yes, they told you that, but you have the choice to reject it. You have a choice. You know, one of the mental faculties that i always think people are misusing is the mental faculty of willpower you can decide now to walk out of this meeting and i have no choice than to just let you go the best i can do is just ask you oh, why are you leaving but i can't stop you from leaving because you have that willpower 
That's the same way you have the whole power to decide which beliefs you accept as true about you. What have you believed? What have you heard about yourself? What have you accepted about yourself? If I'm to ask you, can you tell me five things that you know accurately about yourself? Five things that you know accurately about yourself. Will you be able to tell me? So we need to get to that point in life where life does not unfold just as mystery. When people say life is a mystery, I, I have a problem with that. Because life is not mysterious as you think. It's just because you are not having accurate knowledge into, into life. You are saying life is a mystery. You are saying that, that because you want to you know, cover yourself in that shame of ignorance. No, life is not mysterious. God said he has given us the key so that we understand the mysteries of this kingdom. You're a believer and you told me life is a mystery. It means you just don't have accurate knowledge into that problem that you're facing, into that situation that you find yourself in. So I ask you, are you growing every day? Are you developing yourself every day? Because 10 years from now, the people that are going to take over the mountains of this world are going to be the people who invested in their growth, who invested in their development, who invested in their life. You don't plant a seed the day you need its harvest. Listen to this. You don't plant a seed the day you need its fruits. You don't plant a seed the day you want to harvest it. So don't expect the result the day you need it when you've not made any investment into that result. What investment into life are you making? Because see, we are getting into an era, okay? We are getting into a period of time, okay, where men or people are tired of just being a mediocre. People are tired of you just, you know, coming out just with anything just because you think you have something to say so you just want to come out no people are looking for people who can show them results people who have results that's why i tell people that it's not everything that i know that i can share with you no there are some things that we know that we don't share and it's not because we can't share it's simply because we don't have the result that will back what we want to share it's simple you don't just share anything just because you have knowledge about it. You go out sharing. No. I always say this thing that the stage can either elevate you or can disgrace you. So it's not every stage that you accept to go and speak on. No. Just because you are invited to go and speak doesn't mean you should. You, you, are not, you are not obliged to accept all invitations to go and speak. This year, there are many speaking engagements that are rejected. Don't just go because you want to know. Because the stage is not a preparation platform. You don't go and prepare on the stage. The stage is not a rehearsal platform. So make sure you're making all the investments now. You're making all the preparations now. You are renewing your mind every day. You are transforming your mind every day. You're always increasing the tenacity of your belief system. You know, when you have a strong belief system, you are going to be tested. You are going to be tried. But warn to you if your strength fails you on that day because you lack capacity. Because you lack capacity. Because you lack, you lack investment in strength in terms of knowledge capacity. Because you don't have the accurate knowledge to withstand the test of life. The Bible recounts a story where Jesus and his disciples were on a journey. They encountered a storm. Jesus was fast asleep, okay? 
and his disciples were terrified. And they, they went to call Jesus. And when Jesus came, the first thing that he did was did was to um, you know to calm the storm. So when Jesus came, he just spoke to the storm and the storm was calm. All right, the storm was restored. Everything was just okay. One thing that I questioned was, so over the time that uh, his disciples worked with him, they didn't know able to work in the manifestation of the person that they worked with. Remember Jesus, carried the power that they were all seeking. Jesus was actually the power that they were all seeking. But why was it that even after their years with him, within that state that they experienced, within that experience that they had, they couldn't even tackle that situation? It was not just because they couldn't tackle that situation. It was simply because they lacked accurate revelation of who Jesus was. If you want proof, Let's look at the question that Jesus asked his disciples. And he realized that even at the time that Jesus was about to exist, exist his disciples, some didn't even really know him. Jesus asked a simple question that who do men say I am? And someone was telling Jesus that, yeah, yeah, Elijah and all that. Like I was just asking myself, Peter was the only one who was able to give accurate revelation of who Jesus was. who Jesus was. So until you have an accurate revelation of who you are, you are just going to be trying yourself, trying experiment life, you know, trying to see what can work and what cannot work. And by the time you finish experimenting with life, you've wasted a whole lot of years. You've wasted a whole lot of years. Life is not meant just to be experimented. Life is meant to be fulfilled. At the end of the day, the Bible says that our works are going to be tested. Our works are going to be passed through fire. Okay, and only those who are strong are going to withstand. Strength here doesn't mean you have to, you know, be physically endowed in terms of you know muscles and all that no strength here simply means a fulfillment of your purpose because the fulfillment of your purpose is what brings you joy it's what brings you strength it's what brings you that happiness it's what brings you that peace of mind so paul after his ministration after fulfilling his ministry says something that i'm now being offered i'm now being offered I'm not being offered. I've fought the fight. I've finished the race. I've kept the face. At the end of the day, can you make this statement? Can you say to yourself that I've transformed my life, I've transformed others, and I have fought a good fight? Oh, good and faithful servant does not come on a silver platter. It doesn't come on a silver platter. If you want to be elevated, if you want to be transformed, you need to have a strong belief system. You need to have a structure that you work in, that you live your life in. Your life should be intentional. You don't wake up confused. You wake up knowing exactly what you, you are doing. And one of the mistakes that we are trying to also do in our generation, young people, Self included is that we are always trying to compare ourselves with others. We are trying to compare ourselves. Comparison is a thief of joy. Comparison is a thief of joy. The moment you begin to fall in that trap of comparing yourself with others, you've missed the picture. You've missed that big picture. Because purpose is not something that you compare others you know, journey with yours. 
it's not it's not it's not a process whereby you're comparing yourself with others journey people started way before you you also starting way before others so what you have to focus on is yourself is yourself is yourself is yourself if or if you all you can you can hear me still please type one 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 the chest The only race that you have, you know, you're supposed to run in life is the race against your purpose. 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 You need to run in a way so that you can get the price. What is that price? The price of fulfillment the price of fulfillment and it's not going to come easy that these are going to cry or this is going to weep you know that these are going to feel like you should give up on all that and i always use this as an example because that's the that's the best person that i'm learning from okay this is the best person that i can learn from as a kingdom ambassador even on his crucifixion he was weeping yet he was fulfilling purpose. What does this tell us? This tells us that even the fulfillment of our purpose, there are days of darkness. There are days that we feel like we should give up. There are days that we feel like, hey, this is too heavy for me. So don't be worried about those times. What you should be focused on is that you stay on track. You stay on track. You stay on track. So not come easy. No. I wouldn't be here to tell you that it's going to come easy. There are days that I cry. There are days that I feel like, hey, why am I doing all this? I could just live my life like a normal person. You know, I could just do whatever I can do. You know, just just go about my duties. You know, just wake up, go to work. You know, just 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 act like a normal human would do. You know, get married. You know, have kids. Just just do that. But why am I going all the extra mile? Do you know that I'm doing? Yeah. Yesterday, I was on a host seat um, in, in, in my NSS group, and they were asking me some questions. Some of, some of the questions I just see and I just smile. You know, someone was asking me what inspires me to do what I do and like all I'm doing. You know, at a very young age, I was like, you know, purpose inspires me. Purpose inspires me. Purpose inspires me. Outside purpose, there's nothing else that I find you know, fulfilling. So make your, your purpose your utmost priority. Make purpose your utmost priority. When you make purpose your utmost priority, you will find the need to transform your mind on a daily basis. You find the need to renew your mind on a daily basis because you realize that your mind becomes your weapon for life. Your mind becomes your weapon for living. Your mind becomes that tool that you use to win in life. If your mind is defeated, no matter how strong you are physically, you are going to be defeated. If your mind is defeated, no matter how strong you are physically, you are going to be defeated. So make sure that you have that mental tenacity. You have that mental strength. You have that mental capacity. And how do you build mind power? This is the last thing I'm going to share with you. Then I'm going to have you know, time for questions, if there's any, before we end. Someone may ask, how do we build mind power? OK. So mind power, when we talk about mind power, mind power is simply that power that you have within your mind to become and have all that you want to have. To become all that you want to do or be and have all that you want to have. But this mind power is not something that comes automatically to you. No, mind power is not something that is imparted. No, you need to build it. So we build mind power. 
just like you build a house there are different types of buildings that we see all over there are buildings with five you know floors there are buildings with 45 floors there are buildings with 100 floors so depending on how far you want to go you build in your mind that spring there are people that in a day they lose a million dollar they are not even worried they don't even know that they've lost the money and there are people that they, when their 10 cities gets missing everyone would know that that 10 cities is missing i believe you get the picture so you need to build that mental capacity and you build this mind power through activities such as prayer 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 is not just you know as christians um, we are being told, you know, prayer is the key, all right? And, and prayer is not only just for Christians, all right? Muslims to pray, Buddhists to pray. Whatever that you find yourself doing, one of the easiest ways to grow your mental capacity is by praying. And what does the Bible even teach us about praying? That when you pray, believe that ye have received. The Bible taught us the secret way to manifestation, but we, we never even paid attention to it. That when we pray, we should believe that we have received what we are asking for. We should believe that what we have received, what we are asking for. In other words, you should become the person that you are praying. So that you can have that which you are praying for. You should see yourself as a person who really has that thing that you are praying for. And it takes time to do that. It takes time to come to that manifestation. There are men of God that, you know, in every country that they go, they will never have uh, any challenge. In terms of anything, they can call for something and just within a minute. Pastor Chris says something that there's no place in this world that he, he would visit and he would lack anything. No doesn't like it unless he doesn't like it and that statement has been ringing in my mind for some time now i watched that video and I, like i just put over that statement like for him to make that statement that he can never like anything in this world meaning he has something that he has built he has something that he is depending on he has something that he he's so reliable and he's you know he, he's so sure that that thing is not going to disappoint him have you gotten to that point in your faith that you know for sure that this thing, no matter what, no matter the challenges, no matter my physical limitations, this thing cannot stop me. This thing cannot stop me. This thing cannot stop me. I used to build mental capacity is through visualization. Visualization is a very broad topic, but let me simplify it for you. Visualization simply means having a mental our scene where you believe that you receive that which you are accent for so in visualization what you are doing is to create a mental scene so for instance you want to um travel outside okay marriage for example so you want to get married all right you see yourself already having your A wedding already been congratulated by people you know to replay it over a period of time it's just a process of time and you'll be attracting those things to you you'll be attracting those things to you you'll be attracting those things to you so sometimes we are surprised that some people come into our life no they don't come into our life just because they feel like coming we attracted those people all of a sudden you are reconnecting to your old friends all of a sudden you know yeah 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 just finding your old schoolmates around you it's it's not it's not just by luck no yeah 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 attracting it the bible says that job says something that that which i feared had come upon me if that which i had feared can come upon you it means that which you have faith in can also come upon you what are you having faith in have faith in your visualization have faith in your prayers these two things i always tell people take away anything from me but leave me with prayer and visualization i can reclaim everything back yes i'm so certain of it because i've practiced it and i've seen results 
There are men who can sit in their rooms and people can see them in other countries. People can see them in other vicinities and interact with them, but they are just sitting in their rooms. Go and read about this man called Neville Goddard. This man could just sit in his room and imagine himself in other places and people will see him and people will come like, I just saw you. So, so powerful. So powerful. There was this recent movie, I think I've forgotten the title. So, uh, so this recent movie about um, imagination. I don't know that I've never touched it. It's just a recent event, just around us here. I already see. Uh, I don't know. Let me see whether I can see it. Uh, it should be something. But if I remember, I'll just share it with you, Rishma. And just take time. When I get the, 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 I'll just share it with you. Just take time and you know, have a view of this movie. You get to understand how people are using their minds to create things and bring things into existence. People are already living in 2030. People are already living in 2040. People already know what is going to happen in 2040, 2050. It's not by prophecy. It's not just by, you know, um, predictions. No, it's because they are using their mental faculties. They are using their minds. I always say to people that all the years that you are looking for are in existence, you can just walk into them and come out anytime. Why can prophets, you know, prophesy about a year that you know you've not even entered? They are using their mental faculty called imagination. Go and ask any prophets. He'll tell you. They can sit down for six, six hours, 12 hours. People can sit down just for the whole day, just imagine, just a mental scene. And you want these people to just, you know, act normally. No, nah, it doesn't happen like that. No. <laughs> Power doesn't come cheap. Power is not, it's not something that you have access to cheap. No. No, no, no. It would be unfair for men to have access to power cheaply. No, it would be unfair. So as I bring tonight's meeting to an end, the last thing that I will say is that make sure your mind is not corrupted. Because if your mind is corrupted, your life will be corrupted. Make sure your mind is not corrupted. Make sure your mind is already is always renewed. Make sure you are living a life full of clarity. You know what you are doing, why you are doing it, how you are going to do it. Let no one ask you, you know, what are you trying to do or who do you want to become in life and all that and you tell the person, oh, I'm just, I'm just, in, just waiting for what God has for me. No, it is, it is the voice of foolishness. Oh, whatever will come, will come. No. <laughs> Pastor Chris will tell you that's the voice of foolishness. Last time I put something in my status. In the book of Proverbs 18, you see something that it is foolishness to pay a fool who does not want to learn. And I believe we are not. We want to commit ourselves to personal development. We want to commit ourselves to a constant development of ourselves. It is you against you. The focus should always be you. You can't pour from an empty cup. In our haste to help others, sometimes we forget to help ourselves. So I'll end here if there's any question.
if there's anything in clarity on, you can ask me. Uh, it's almost nine. I've called someone to really do that. So we're going to end here. I appreciate you all for making time. You know, Richmond and Joel, you guys have stayed true and I'm grateful. For me, I'm not worried about numbers, even if it's just one person and his life or her life is transformed. But it's a story of one soul's transformation. Okay. So I'll end here. If you have any question, let's do it. Okay, thank you, NK. Thank you, NK. Yeah, so please, um, if there is any question, we can ask. We can ask. But I would love to know. I think I I did not hear the person you mentioned who said that he can get everything he needs in the world. I was thinking, um, what does it take to come to that level of thinking? That I have this okay. global relevance. <laughs> <laughs> so that was Pastor Chris, okay? And he was teaching on the power of meditation. Um, yes, meditation and imagination. Okay. So he made a statement that he can have access to whatever he wants in this life unless he doesn't want it. And he's making this statement based on his level of mental capacity all right that's why i said that mind power comes in level it's just like you building a house or you building you know um, structures you have buildings that have 40 floors we have buildings that have just a floor we have buildings that have 100 floors and all that so depending on how far and you realize that the buildings with the with more floors are able to you know reach higher height simply saying that the farther you want to go, the farther you should build in your mind. That man has come to that level of assurance, that level of certainty that he has been able to hack the, you know, or crack the code of manifestation. If you're able to understand what it means to pray and believe that you've received what you've asked for, if that scripture becomes an embodiment becomes part of you. You know that whatever you want to have in this life, you can have access to it. The moment you begin to have fear, you know, sometimes we want to have something. And um, so let me say, let me use this example. Let's say um, tomorrow I tell myself I want to, or in, in a week, let me say, let me use a week. So in a week I tell myself I want to make $10,000, all right? My mind will be thinking, well, I have not even made $1,000 yet. What am I thinking about making 10000 Oh, I have not made $10,000 yet. Or am I thinking about making a hundred thousand dollars? All right. So you begin to have these thoughts. That's that's when fear will begin to cripple, and you begin to wonder, like, how is this going to happen? The moment you begin to have these thoughts, you've lost it. You've lost it. It's 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 just like you ordering something from Jumi or Alibaba, and they tell you, I think it's it's like it's it's coming, or the thing, you know, it's it's processing, and you are worried. Why are you worried? You should not be worried because you know it's definitely going to come. So that mentality, if you have that mentality, if you can sustain that mental capacity or that mental clarity that I am certain that this thing is going to happen without having any doubt, with a sh assured faith, then your, your problem is not about the how. Problem should, should be always the why and what you want. Clarity is very important. So I believe this helps you, Richmond. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, thank you very much, Joe. Um, what do you also see? Do you have a question? Yeah, I wanted to ask for the scripture he kept on mentioning that if we um ask for something in prayer and we believe we 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 have it. I, I wanted to know the actual scripture so that I'll use it when I'm praying. Okay, so Mark 11, 24. Okay, Mark 11, 24. All right. Okay. Okay. Okay, so if there's no other question then, um, Richmond, I want to use the opportunity to appreciate you for this. 
pleasant time that we've had um, sharing. You know, actually, I've not been well for the past week, so I'm trying my best to catch up. But it's all good. At least we've tried our best today. And I'm grateful for you all for making it, you know, for showing up. So I appreciate my presence. It means a lot for me. So God bless you and have a wonderful week ahead. Tomorrow is Sunday. We enter into a new week. So have a wonderful week. And let's meet tomorrow. For those of you in the School of Outstanding Resort, I think Richmond, you are there, Joy. We have a session tomorrow. Yeah. Um, using yeah. this opportunity to invite you all to make time to join me tomorrow as we talk about how to get started as an entrepreneur. All right. So until then, cheers and have a wonderful week. Bye-bye, Richmond. Yeah. Bye. Bye. God bless you too. God bless you. Okay. So we'll call it an evening. Bye.